In our discussion on electron flow, we said that electrons will only flow within an electric circuit if there exists an electric potential difference within that closed electric circuit. So electrons flow from a lower potential to a higher potential within a closed electric circuit. So once again, to force electrons to flow within an electric circuit, there must exist a voltage difference, an electric potential difference within that electric circuit. So from experiments we see that the electric current is directly proportional to our voltage difference. So if we increase the voltage difference, we'll increase our electric current. Now, the electric current does not only depend on our voltage difference, it also depends on the resistance that the conductor offers to the flow of our electrons. So what exactly is resistance and where does resistance come from? Well, when our electrons travel through our conducting material, those electrons will interact with the atoms, with the electrons and protons of the atoms found within that particular conducting material. And those interactions, which are electric interactions, will essentially impede, will slow down the flow of electrons. And this concept is known as resistance. And resistance is given by capital R. So the units of resistance are given by the Greek symbol omega, which stands for ohms. So the relationship between the electric current, the voltage, and our resistance of the electric circuit is given by the following equation, which is commonly known as Ohm's law. Now, Ohm's law is not actually a fundamental law because it does not apply to all different types of materials. So Ohm's law essentially describes the current in metal conductors whose temperature does not change too drastically. So what this equation basically states is the following. The voltage is equal to the product of the current and our resistance. So for example, if our voltage increases when our resistance stays the same, the electric current will increase as well. So we can essentially plot this on the x-y axis where the x-axis is the electric current and the y-axis is our voltage. And we see we get the following linear relationship. So if we increase our voltage, we increase our current as long as our R remains the same. So in this case, the R is simply the change in our voltage divided by the change in our electric current, and that is our slope. Now, let's examine the following two important points that we must understand. Resistance given by R does not depend on our current and it does not depend on our voltage. Resistance is independent of those things. Resistance is a property of the type of conductor that we are using. Certain conductors will have a higher resistance than other conductors. Now, let's examine point number two. Batteries do not actually create electric current, but rather they are used to maintain a constant voltage difference. The voltage depends on the type of battery that we are using. So, let's examine the following example. A device draws 3 amps of electric current as a result of a 12 volt battery. So, in part A, what is our resistance? So, we take Ohm's law, we rearrange it and solve for our resistance. We see that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by our electric current. So, 12 volts divided by 3 amps gives us 4 ohms. In part B, if you double the voltage when our R remains constant, what happens to our electric current? So the R remains constant, we double this, so that means this must also double. So let's see if that actually works out. So we see that I is equal to voltage divided by R. So we double our voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts divided by 4 ohms, and we get 6 amps. So we go from 3 amps to 6 amps, so our electric current doubles. 